Hello, everybody. It's 4 o'clock Pacific time on Friday, which means I'm drinking again. Hope you're going to join me today in a drink up. Uh, interesting day today, kind of craptacular. Started out okay, had a lot of great meetings, got a lot of stuff done. The day ended like, eh, you know, when you've got a project that you're super excited about and there's a bunch of people working on it and you think it's going fine until you get somebody who's like not in your control, you can't control the content or whatever. It's like just brings the whole thing down. That's what happened today. Kind of the sucky end of a day. So I'm super ready and excited to drink. Uh, and today we're going to make gimlets. Uh, gimlets are great drinks. Like I'm, this is probably one of those things that I would have done earlier. Um, I'll try not to take up too much time because the NFL draft is starting. And if you're a draft nick like me, you want to get to it, but I guarantee these drinks are worth it. Gimlets are awesome, light drinks, great for summertime, great for springtime. Hell, they're great for any time. Who am I fooling? Uh, and we talked, I think we made the art martini a little bit about gin. And I kind of talked about how gin, a lot of gins start from vodka. And it's, it's pretty much the case. Um, you know, they're essentially, most gins are produced um, by distilling botanicals. Um, juniper being the most the most prevalent one, all gins have juniper, um, with a neutral grain alcohol. And in today's modern times, that neutral grain alcohol is vodka. Uh, I've actually kind of asked a question, well, doesn't that just make gin a flavored vodka? Kinda, but there's a very special way this vodka is made. And one important thing to know about gins is that all the flavorings are absolutely neutral, okay? Uh, all gins also have junipers. Uh, we talked about in the very first one, we talked about bourbon and all the things that make up a bourbon, how rye is a little bit looser. Gins are even looser than that. Gins don't really have any recipe and that's why gins are so interesting and can be so good. And there's such a wide range of gins. Uh, about the only thing with gins is that uh, they have juniper, you know, uh, and outside of that, they've got all kinds of stuff. So we're going to use my house gin today. Well, I'm going to use my house gin, Hadley and Sons. I love this stuff. It's really good. It's a very smooth, very light gin. Um, has is very easy on the botanicals, not overly flavorful. Uh, but since today was such an awesome day, uh, we're going to start with drinking a, a little gin straight up. This is, I think I showed you this before. Oh, 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 oh uh, Mm. Ah. Ah. Don't do this at home. So this is my favorite gin, which is why I spent so much time getting that cork out, damn it. Um, it's Angelica Gin. The only place I've ever actually been able to get this is in Reykjavik. So I've, when I do work in Europe and I fly back, I actually go through Iceland, stop the airport and get this stuff. If you can find this in the States, I highly recommend it. It's super interesting. It's got a very interesting botanical... Um, profile like nothing I've ever had before. Super good. So I'm going to have a little bit of that. And whatever gin you're drinking right now, I highly suggest just pour a little bit out and, and taste it because tasting gin, uh, tasting any alcohol you're mixing is great. It, you should do that. Oh my goodness, that is lovely. So some interesting facts about gin. We'll start back in the 14th century. A lot of people equate gin to the Black Plague. And, uh, and as this cure-all, and there's a reason for that, is because in the 14th century, when the Black Plague was killing everyone in Europe, juniper berries, and in fact, a lot of things that go into gin, were considered uh, a cure for the plague. Fast forward to the 15th century, the Dutch are the first ones who were super smart, and these are the guys that actually started infusing juniper into booze. Awesome uh, for Dutch guys. Fast forward to the 17th century, it's kind of weird because I always associated gin with the English and the United Kingdom. So in the 15th century, you had the 30-year war between, um, what, France, Spain, England, and Holland. And that's kind of where the English started drinking gin, uh, I think. That's kind of where they got it from. They used to have a, a saying, you know, they say, Dutch courage and take a shot and, and down a shot before they went into battle which is kind of interesting, but I think that's kind of how the English got the whole gin thing. 
Fast forward to the 18th century, and gin is like all the rage there. Uh, you may have heard the term bathtub gin. It's because gin was so popular in London that they're literally distilling it and freaking everything. It is also where you get the term blue water and mother's milk because a lot of that gin was not good. Actually was blue or milky and just nasty. Like I'm sure probably like actually blinded people and stuff like that. Not good because they make it into freaking everything. Like it, it took over London huge. That was in the 17th century. So let's take a little break from history. Let's try another gin. This is Breckenridge gin. I really like it. See, you guys can tell how my day went. Um, it's, it's a really smooth uh, gin as well. Smells super yummy. It's got a really good botanical head. Uh, it's not nearly as interesting as this Angelica gin. This is more of a, a, a traditional gin with a little bit heavier botanicals and just a, a kind of a run-of-the-mill gin. Mm. But super smooth, super yummy. So those are good gins. Um, back to history lesson because I think this is interesting. So bathtub gin going all over the place. I was in the 18th century, fast forward to the 19th century. And all of a sudden, gin in London becomes refined and it's the drink for gentle folk, right? In fact, that is where you get the term London dry gin. It was um, special gin cultivated for all these, you know, hoity-toity, uppity, muckety mucks, right? Um, and then, you know, fast forward to the 20th century over here in the States, especially, in the Roaring Twenties, gin is all the rage. Everyone loves gin, and it really hasn't looked back since. So, uh, I know some of you aren't big drink gin drinkers. I guarantee this drink you will love. Gins actually are, are meant to be mixed with stuff. Um, most gins really aren't meant to be um, consumed just by themselves or like over ice or something, although I, I like gin, but most of them are actually meant to be mixed, right? Uh, and the drink we're going to make is amazing. So let's start with a basic gimlet. Basic gimlet is super simple to make, right? Like everything I make, it's going to have at least two ounces of booze, right? So we're going to have two ounces of gin in this to a half an ounce of our good friend Simple Syrup and a half an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. And I already took care of that, so you guys didn't have to watch me squeeze the lime. Um, that's it. That is a gimlet, right? Put it in a shaker, shake it, you're good. Um, we're going to make, well, that that's, so gin gimlet, two ounces of gin, half ounce uh, simple syrup, half ounce freshly squeezed lime juice, take a little lime uh, and use it as a garnish. Uh, some people like a little bit more lime juice or uh, some people like a little bit more simple syrup and that's okay. I wouldn't go any more than three quarters of an ounce of either one because you're going to just kill the drink and you're going to lose all the botanicals. Um, so that's my thing. Um... Since I probably shouldn't be drinking six shots and funny like I did the other week, uh, I'm just going to drink four shots. And I had that other stuff, so it comes up. Um, so I was drinking gin with a buddy of mine, Matt Gibson, who some of you know. Uh, and he said, wow, this would be great with basil. And holy shitballs, he was right. Uh, I call this the Gibson Gimlet. And so I'm going to take some big fatty leaves of basil. Okay, got three of them in there. Okay, I'm putting them in my shaker, and I'm going to muddle those. Remember, we talked about leafy stuff and how you want to be careful when you muddle those, right? You want to bruise them, but you don't want to rip them up because you don't want the chlorophyll out there because um, that has the potential to kind of ruin your drink. Like, oh, okay, perfect. So I've got that basil in there. It's all muddled up. Awesome. Going to throw some ice in the shaker. Get that bad boy ready. Okay, got tons of ice in there. Uh, let's start with the simple syrup. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour a half ounce of simple syrup in here. Okay, remember, we've got a Japanese jigger. We've got an ounce on this side. We've got two ounces on this side. Crap, I put too much, so. Uh, here, ah, just sugar water. Okay, half ounce. 
And then I've got my freshly squeezed lime juice. I'm gonna put a half ounce of that in there. Perfect. And now the gin. Now I'm gonna use Hadlington. This is my house gin. Um, I get this stuff at Total Wine for like $25 or something for a half gallon. And it's really good gin. Um, like I said, most gins are are actually made for mixing. Um, so, you know, if you have a good drink, you can get away with a gin that's maybe not as spectacular. Um, but I actually do like Hadley & Sons just sipping. Like, it, it's, it's good gin. So, this is the Gibson variant, right, of the gin gimlet. We have some muddled basil on the bottom. We have a half ounce of simple syrup, a half ounce of freshly squeezed uh, lime juice, and two ounces of gin. And remember, we've got basil in the bottom of this. So when we shake it, we're, got, we're not going to go absolutely, you know, eight like we did before uh, with like the Manhattans, let's say. Uh, we're just going to shake it gently because we don't want to rip up the leaves, right? But again, when I make these, I like to make them super cool. Okay, you can see that. I mean, super yummy to me. Okay. We're going to pour this out. Oh, look at that bad boy. Oh, my goodness. That screams Friday, doesn't it? I think it does. Okay. There's that. I'm going to then take a lime here. I'm going to cut off a little bit of that lime. Maybe not. There we go. I'm just going to rim the glass. We'll squeeze, dump it in there. Cheers. That's your gin gimlet. Oh my God. So, those of you that are following along, if this isn't one of the best gin drinks ever, I don't know. The beautiful part about it is, you, like I said, be careful with the simple syrup. You don't want to put too much for sure. That's why I kind of drank some and took it out because... It, the drink is, is ends up being sweet enough. But the nice thing about it, it's really good. The nice thing about it is that the botanicals, so if you get a good gin, the botanicals mix really super well with the lime. And that simple syrup just gives it a little bit of sweetness um, that, to me, puts it over the top. Um, I like it with basil. You don't have to make it with basil, right? This is just a variant of it. I think the basil just adds a nice uh, flavor on top of the botanicals and the sweetness um, that kind of brings it out a little bit. I was never a big basil fan. In fact, I don't really put basil in anything but these, uh, but I really, really like it. Okay, so on to the second drink. Now, the second drink is something that uh, when I made it the first time, I thought it was the most ludicrous, stupidest idea ever. I just thought it was going to suck the big schwastuker. My good friend, Brian Weber, and his wife, who's also my good friend, Tracy Weber, came over, and um, I was making gin gimlets. Tracy does not like gin, but she loves coconut vodka, and she just got in the store and had a fifth of coconut vodka, and she said, Steve, can you make a gimlet? with coconut vodka. And I said, no, I cannot make a gimlet with coconut vodka. She said, please, I really don't like gin. I'm like, this is going to suck. This, this drink is going to suck the big schwastuker. She's like, no, 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 just make it for me. Right. And I said, okay, fine. Uh, and I made it and truth be told that thing rocks. Like it is amazing. Right. So this is Tracy's gimlet. Like it sounds disgusting. Uh, I, you guys know I'm not a big, a big vodka fan in the first place. I hate coconut. I really do not like coconut in anything. This drink is amazing, right? And we're going to do it the same way. Uh, once again, basil's optional. I've got my shaker all loaded up. Um, I'm not too particular right now. I'm just going to leave that basil in there. But I'm not going to put it in anymore. So same thing, okay? We're going to put in a half an ounce of simple syrup. And once again, like, I, I know that you guys are thinking, coconut vodka, Steve, this sounds disgusting. And you'd be right in saying that. But 
you have to try this drink um, because it is like it's it, it's good. And I can't thank Tracy enough for giving me the idea. That's why it's this is this is the Tracy Gimlet. <sighs> yes. Coconut vodka. Schmirnoff coconut vodka. This is like 12 bucks, 13 bucks a bottle. Like it almost seems criminal to be using this because it's so. I mean, it's coconut freaking vodka. It smells like Hawaii, for Christ's sake. But I'm going to take two ounces of this bad boy. <laughs> and I'm going to put it in the shaker. Okay. So, the Tracy Gimlet, we're substituting the gin with coconut vodka. Now... I think it's important to remember that, um, like, some of you don't like gin, uh, but you like vodka. This is not a drink you just want to drink with vodka. Um, the vodka, grain-based alcohol, it's not going to, it's going to be a very blah drink. With the gin, you get the botanicals, you get that nice flavor that wraps in there. With this coconut vodka, oddly enough, um, the coconut kind of takes the place of the botanicals and actually makes a drink that's worth drinking, believe it or not. Okay, so everything's in here. Two ounces of coconut vodka, half ounce of simple syrup, uh, half ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. I still have that basil in there. Uh, you can make it with basil or without basil. Like I said, it's kind of your preference. I think the basil works really, really well in the base gin gimlet. Um, in the coconut gimlet, the basil, to be quite honest, the, the flavor is lost a little bit because that coconut kind of overpowers it. Okay. Tracy Weber, if you're watching, you should be loving this. Get every freaking drop of that bad boy out of there. Okay, perfect. Same thing. I cut up a little bit of lime. Man, I need a different knife. There we go. Nice little piece of lime. I'm gonna rim the glass there. I really don't have to do this because I just did this before. Uh, and cheers. I get ridiculous. It's like this is like a. Uh, it, I don't, it, it's something that someone does not like. That someone who I think gimlets in general, the gin gimlet is something that you can give to someone who does not like cocktails or mixed drinks or gin, and they will like it. This is something you can give your freaking five-year-old and get them freaking hooked and become an alcoholic super quick. This drink right here is like the ultimate leg spreader. This thing's crazy. Seriously, I'm drinking it myself. Molly's going to hate me later. Oh, my God, that's a good drink. So, Gimlet's. Oh, screw that. I'm drinking the whole thing. This is really good, man. Mm. Mm. You should actually enjoy these because they're really good. As soon as I'm off of Facebook, I'm going to make like five more of these and drink them and enjoy them. Uh -huh. But wow, man, that takes the edge off on a day on Friday. So these drinks are super good. Gimlet's very easy to make. Anyone can make them. Two parts of gin. A half a part of simple syrup, a half a part of freshly squeezed lime juice. Uh, if you like basil, use basil. Basil makes a, a, a more of a difference with the gin because the basil works really well with the botanicals in the gin. In the fruity tutti, fresh and fruity, whatever, this version, um, the basil is kind of lost. And I make fun of this, of Tracy's Gimlet, but it's good. Like, you have to try it. I know it sounds disgusting. Go out and buy yourself a fifth of Shmirnoff Coconut Vodka and try it because it is amazing. Um, and like I said, all credit goes to Tracy Weber. Like, um, because she gave me a great drink to add to my repertoire. So, hope you learned something today. Um, I thought it was fun. A little history of gin. And the reason why I brought that up is because really I didn't, you know, the, the history of gin is interesting, um, especially because, I always, like I said, I always 
thought it was an English thing, but it's really a Dutch thing that the English just kind of took, like everything else during their, you know, um, empire days, just took, 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 which is fine because we just took our country back anyway. Um, I'm using this. This is now my new cutting board. My youngest daughter made this for me in shop, which I think is cool. Uh, it's a pig, but it's cool. Um, not sure what I'm going to make next week. Uh, some of you have been clamoring for a tequila drink, and I think you're right. I think it's time for a tequila drink, uh, which means that Molly will make the drink, not me. I'm not a tequila guy. Uh, I, I can make a couple tequila drinks. The tequila Old Fashioned is amazing. You know, just a simple old-fashioned recipe like we did a few weeks ago. Um, all you do is take out the bourbon, put in tequila. It's freaking amazing. Get a Respado uh, tequila uh, or, or just a simple gold tequila like Cuervo Gold works great. It's awesome. But uh, I think we may go tequila next week. Uh, we may have a guest bartender uh, and my wife, Molly. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but it should be fun. Uh, I'm sure most of you will enjoy her way more than you enjoy me. Uh, but I hope you had some fun. Friday. Enjoy Friday. Gin gimlets are amazing. That coconut vodka gimlet is amazing. An easy drink to make, uh, especially after the Kevin last week. By the way, I haven't thought of a better name. I got a lot of really good ideas from last week. Um, I think one of the best ones I got was from Clark Butler, um, the Dewey Bunnell, uh, or Dewey Bunnell. Dewey Bunnell is a guy that wrote Horse With No Name, uh, and it was a drink with no name. So it could be the Dewey B. I thought that was a good name. I got a bunch of good names from you guys. Um, but my friend Beth actually made a really good point, which is, hey, look, it's got a story behind it as the Kevin. So maybe you should just keep calling it the Kevin. And maybe I will just call it the Kevin. So that was last week. Um, basil's good. Uh, so we'll think about what we make next week. It'll probably be a tequila drink if I can get my wife in here. Uh, if not, I've got a repertoire of all kinds of great stuff. I just uh, made a, a drink this last week called a Bespoke. Um I don't know if I invented it or if I grabbed stuff from someplace else, but it's it's kind of like this gin gimlet with bourbon and a, a red wine float. I'm not a wine guy. I hate wine, but this drink is amazing. And so uh, at some point we will do this, the bespoke, and I'll, I'll show you guys how to float uh, alcohol so you get those kind of layers, which is kind of cool. Um, we'll do that at some point, uh, but I don't know if we'll do that next week. If we don't do mm, basil. If we don't do tequila, maybe we'll do the bespoke. bespoke. Um, there's also a couple other also. There are also a couple other drinks that uh, I've got on tap. The funny part about this is I just realized today. I think this is the fifth week in a row we've been doing this, uh, and so you know, hopefully at some point this ends. But as long as we're in this freaking lockdown, dude, like I'm doing this every week, and after the lockdown, I may do it anyway. Because I think it's kind of fun. It's cathartic at the end of the week. It's a nice release. You guys can watch me make a fool of myself. And hopefully learn how to make a good drink. Bartending, I've discovered, is super easy. Um, it's funny. Today I saw a group on for like a $4 online bartending class. And I'm like going, what the hell are they going to teach me? Seriously. It, bartending is not hard. It's easy. Making drinks is easy. All you have to do is remember a few base components and then start from there. right? Like the old-fashioned, like the gimlet. Um, those types of things, uh, the Manhattan, start with the base and start adding things to it to make it what you want. But bartending is not a freaking black science. It's not an, uh, 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 it, it's easy. It, it's, it's a simple art to learn. And so I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I love making them because like I said, it gives me something to do and look forward to on Fridays during this crazy time. Uh, Jim Gimlet's, uh, and the Tracy Gimlet and the Gibson variant, the Gibson Gimlet. Hope you enjoyed them. Hope you followed along with me. Uh, and um, have an uh, amazing weekend. Be safe. Be careful. Do not uh, mainline bleach or Lysol. That's a very bad idea. So don't do those things. Love you guys. I will talk to you. <laughs> Love you guys. Oh, my God. I am drunk. Um <laughs> By the way, I highly recommend you do these on an empty stomach because it makes it so much better. I will talk to you guys next Friday at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Uh, until then, uh, have a great week, guys. Cheers.